right. We are here at the Red State Gathering with Ron DeSantis, who is running in Florida's 6th District. I just had the pleasure of meeting him for the first time today, and he's got my support. He's got Eric Erickson's support. He's got Freedom Works support. So, you know, that, that should be enough to get you at least interested in him. But let's hear a little bit more directly from him. Um, how are you enjoying the gathering so far? I'm having a wonderful time. There are a lot of very, very good committed patriots here, and uh, this is great energy. This is what we need to bring it home in 2012. Okay, now this is the first time you've run for office, correct? That's right. Okay, what got you what got you interested in, in throwing your hat in the ring and running for Congress? Well, last year I came out with a book called Dreams from Our Founding Fathers, First Principles in the Age of Obama, and basically I show how Obama, Pelosi, Reid are really taking us away from a lot of the principles that the Founding Fathers believed in and applied when they created the Constitution. So I was going around the state, I was invited, fortunately, to speak at a lot of different groups, and everywhere I went people would say, well, one, they would want to know, how did you go to Yale and Harvard and end up a conservative? And I said I had wisdom beyond my years. And then two, they would say, look, you need to get out there. We need guys like you who can articulate what we believe in, you know, who are young, who got to have energy. That's the future kind of deal. So I knew that I had a lot of people that were pushing me to do it. And then it just so happened that with the redistricting, Florida got two new districts, so the lines were redrawn. Where I live in St. John's County, there is now this open seat that's a Republican-leaning seat. So here I was going around with my book telling people to get off their butt and do something in 2012 to save the country. I had people who wanted me to do it, and so I said, look, I'm just chirping on the sidelines now. I need to get out there and get in the arena. Well, that's great. I always like to see people that are politically involved and, 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 and speaking out to actually, you know, put their name on the ballot. Um, but it is different actually being the candidate. What, what, is there anything that surprised you that, that you just didn't expect about actually being the candidate? I mean, I didn't really appreciate just how much time and effort goes into raising money for the campaign. And, um, you know, because you are you have limited in terms of how much a, an individual can give to you. You cannot get anything from companies. So you basically, a guy like me, I had no office. I was a citizen candidate. Uh, it's not as if I could just kind of leverage donations from people who had business in front of me in, as a certain politician or something. So I had to really go out, make phone calls, do events, just really work as hard as I could to do it. So we've been really fortunate. And very successful so far with the fundraising. We definitely are leading our competitors, but uh, that did not come easy, and um, that's something that takes up a lot of your time. Not as much now because we're in the home stretch. But when I first started in February, I was probably spending 90% of my time raising money. Yeah, that, that, that can be a frustrating thing for a new candidate. I've worked on a lot of campaigns, and trying to get that ball rolling is is, is can be really tough. But that's good that things are going well. Um, what um, one thing I've noticed in talking to um, people who got elected to the House in the last round, 2010 that there's a different spirit, there's a feistiness to them, a, a more of a sense of urgency in and dealing with the spending problems. Um, what, who, who do you look to in the, in the 2010 class as your inspiration? Um, well, in the 2010 class, um, I don't know if you would count Tom Graves of Georgia on that. I think he was elected in a special election in the middle of 2010. We'll, we'll count it. It's new enough. Term. He's a guy from Georgia who has a great proposal to devolve the highway spending bill, the highway spending gas revenue to the states. Because what we have right now is you have all this money up there. People are like pigs at the trough trying to get as much as they can for their district or their state. And the federal government ends up getting involved in things that are purely local concern. Uh, so I think he's a reformer. He's somebody that is uh, willing to take tough votes and just do what's right. Uh, so that's somebody that I would certainly emulate on fiscal matters. Okay, yeah, I, that's one of the things that I, I is one of my pet issues is there's a lot of things I think that we could take out of the federal government's control and roll back to the states. Um, what other specific things do you think would be good to roll back down to the states? So infrastructure, definitely. Look, there, there are some things that the federal government should do, some of the national ports, military installations, things of that nature. But if you need a county road repaved, that is not a federal concern and that needs to be dealt with at the local level. I think education, of course, uh, no child left behind it, race to the top. That's basically a way for Washington to exert power over local school districts, and I don't think that that has proven to be successful, and I don't think it's constitutionally uh, desirable, so I think we want to devolve that. I also think if you look at what Obama's done, he's essentially gotten rid of welfare reform. He's fostering a dependency culture in our, in our society, and, and that is very damaging, and so 
I think the federal government has been involved in anti-poverty programs since the 1960s, um, and maybe before that, but that was the war on poverty. And it's not reduced poverty, it's created dependency, and I just think it's, it's a failed system when it's an impersonal bureaucracy sending you an EBT card with no monitoring, no idea whether they're actually trying to get on the right track. So I think if you devolve some of that to the states, if it's being done, say, at the community level, well, then you can know somebody who's coming in to get assistance, whether they're actually making choices to try to better their lives or whether they're just essentially living off the taxpayer. When you have a big Washington bureaucracy, you're never really going to get there. Okay. Um, now, we're here at the Red State Gathering. There's a lot of online activists and bloggers here. Um, what, what, what kind of difference have people like this, online activists, made in your campaign? Well, uh, Eric endorsed me pretty early on, and that was huge because it's just Red State is a place where people will go uh, to read and to learn about different candidates. And so immediately when you have somebody like an Eric Erickson supporting you, uh, that's something that gives you credibility, particularly me as a first-time candidate. Nobody knew who I was, and I had a, a good resume, a good background, a good work ethic, but uh, I really had to show that I could garner conservative support. Um, and so, so it is important. And then just in terms of the local activists who get involved on, on Facebook and Twitter, you know, they help spread messages, and it's helped me get my message out more. We do do the conventional media, of course, but it does help to have people who are committed to promoting you and spreading your message. Okay, you get elected, you're sworn in in January next year. What's your priorities? I know you're going to say repeal Obamacare. Every Republican says that, but what's your number two priority? Yeah. Well, in, in the Obamacare, just would say, though, it's got to be the first thing we do. And I do think there's going to be pressure to just kind of save it or just get the bad parts. And we just we have to be committed to full repeal. I think that should be the first thing that we that we do. Second thing I would, I would do, well, I don't know. I could pick a couple of them. One, abolish the Department of Energy. Two, repeal Dodd-Frank. Um, and, and three, I'd like to see a balanced budget amendment because I think if we elect a lot of conservatives to Congress uh, this time and a Republican president, I do think we can reduce spending and I do think we have a chance to curtail the size of government. But over the long term, you know, we're not going to win every election and I think c Congress as an institution has proven to be incapable of reigning in the size and scope of government and so I think you need constitutional constraints on their ability to spend us into oblivion. Okay, great. Now, where can people find out more about your campaign and help you out? Uh, www.voteron2012.com. We'll have all the links to Facebook and Twitter as well, my biography, different things that we're doing, donation page if anyone is so inclined. Okay, great. Well, we appreciate you coming out to the Red State Gathering and talking to us. You've got my support. You've got my endorsement. If I lived in District 6, you've had my vote, but I'm voting for Sandy Adams in number 7, so good luck to you. Thank you for having me. Great. Thank you.